Hey everyone, you're watching Midwinter Minis. My name's Guy, I have a disgusting cold right now, and this video is sponsored by Audible. Listen, I know why you're here. You know why you're here. I'm just going to cut the small talk. Let's carry on building this Titan, shall we? This is how we left it last time. The massive legs are built, the hollow, blocky torso is now constructed, and the waist joint has been magnetised to allow it to swivel. In this episode, I'm going to try and get all the sub-assemblies built so the model is essentially ready for priming, and for me to start painting. A quick recap of what we've got here, aside from the structure standing on the bookcase, we've got the armour panels I'm keeping separate to make them easier to paint, and to make the body structure underneath easier to paint too. We've got all the bits that we've made previously, the Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator, the Beta Pattern Head, the Ariok Power Claw, Oh, and the little Mega Bolter thing that attaches to it. We've got another box of goodies to build, the Apocalypse Missile Launchers, but each one only has a couple of sections to attach, so it would be a pretty boring video to make on its own, so I'll just finish these off in this video too. While I've got these things out to show you, one thing I would quite like to try is, instead of clipping and attaching all of these missiles to the launcher and then painting it, keeping them on the sprue, and then maybe trying to do a dip painting technique to get even rings of colour on the tips. That might be quite cool. Anyway, the big task here is going to be attaching the arm mounts that not only do the arms hang from, but also the shoulder weapons rest on. That's a lot of weighty resin hanging off what are essentially slip planes, so I'll need to make sure I attach them in a very solid way. No sooner had I got all my bits out to ready and waiting than my mate Steve dropped by to give me a hand. Man, what a pal, he came bearing gifts. Not only an enormous black Americano with no sugar, classic, he'd also brought me a copy of the Golden Demon Compendium. What a treat. Maybe we can look at this in a future video. Now all of the armour panels have been cleaned of their resin gates and mould lines, but the missile launchers and remaining Titan body structure will need a tidy up. Again, you've sat through so much clean up in this series, I don't want to bore you with more, but it was a nice change doing this with a friend rather than going it alone. In case you missed it in the last video, Steve is a crazy talented miniature hobbyist, runs the page Little Plastic People, and has recently built and painted an awesome custom knight army with loads of self-designed 3D parts thrown in. Who better to keep me focused cleaning and building this gargantuan model? Now this is where I'd usually say, and while I worked on this model I listened to a great audiobook from Audible, the sponsor of this video, but Steve and I were chatting away instead. Handily though, Steve's a big fan of Black Library novels and had loads and loads of audiobook recommendations for me. The most interesting one, and relevant for this project, was Assassinorum Kingmaker. It's about a multi-disciplined assassin kill team tasked with bringing separatist night houses back in line, but as always, things aren't quite as they seem. Steve said he really enjoyed it because it was a rare glimpse at the factions that don't get a lot of airtime in the lore, Imperial Knights and Assassins, plus a bit of the internal politics that that entails, and also seeing how agents and assassins from different temples interact with each other. So I bought it. If you want to give it a try too, use the link in the video description, or text Midwinter Minis to 500500 to get a one month free trial of Audible on me. And don't forget to check out all the cool free audiobooks, dramas, podcasts and serialised shows that you get included in your subscription too, they're often the things I enjoy most. Anyway, clean up session over and done with, and everything is neatly arranged and ready to get stuck together. And as a reward for Steve's efforts, Smoky Bacon Walkers, the crisp of Titan Builders. All the resin filings vacuumed up, and now, as you will no doubt know, to make sure the paint sticks to these bits, we're going to need to scrub the remaining mould release residue off the parts. Warm soapy water and a quick going over with a toothbrush will be fine, as nothing looks overly greasy. All the big armour panels go back into the box, essentially these are ready for painting I suppose. Now I want to tackle the big task head on, and get these arm and shoulder mounts in place. As you can see, there's a kind of shallow anchor slot for the shoulder weapon mount to sit in, but the whole arm assembly will be hanging off this big flat section, so I'll need to pin it to make sure all that downward force has something to lean on. I drilled four holes in the corner of each section, inserted some carbon rods without gluing yet, leveled them off, and then applied a dot of white paint to the tops. I can then line that up with the shoulder part to make sure I drill matching holes on the other side. And what a great friend Steve is too, as I was 100% getting ready to start drilling the matching holes freehand when he suggested that it might be way less dangerous to clamp it to the table. To give this assembly the best chance of staying together, I used two-part epoxy. 
JB Weld plastic in this case, mixing it together on a throwaway bit of card and applied using a coffee stirrer, and then clamped everything together. The big armour panel section has this little pipe network underneath it, but when I dry fitted them together they stuck out a little bit too far. I submerged them in hot water for a bit, and then glued it to the torso while it was still warm and malleable. And now using Gorilla Gel Superglue, I glued on the shoulder weapon mounts. The weight is going to be resting on the pin section underneath, so this is really just to make sure it stays in place. Double clamps on to make sure it sets nice and firm, and after about half an hour or so, nice. No wobble at all. That's what we want. The Titan also has a few small weapons, like LAS cannons, and the biggest single barrel bolt weapon in the game. These attach with protruding weapon mounts, so I got all of those attached with gel superglue too, ready for the guns. The back section of the torso, this little platform, has cute little handrails, safety first, but they were pretty wonky. Too wonky to glue, and I didn't fancy trying to force them into shape while they were cold, as thin resin like this can sometimes snap. Instead, I warmed them up using my hairdryer, manhandled it back into straighter shapes, and then again, while it was still warm, I glued it in place. And when they were attached, I gave them a little bit of attention with the hairdryer and did my best to pull the railings a little bit straighter and into better symmetry. One weird thing about the instructions is that the model suddenly goes from having no void shield generators to having eight void shield generators without ever telling you to attach them, so yeah, here we go. I've been reading up on how the void shields work on the Titan in the game rules and, well, I wouldn't want to be playing against this thing. Basically all eight void shields have to be destroyed before the Titan itself starts taking damage, but if a single shield takes enough damage to go down, all the excess damage from the attack is lost and doesn't transfer to the next shield or the Titan. So if you hit the shields with a massive high strength high damage attack, it'll basically take down one shield and do nothing. Nasty. So yeah, back to the auxiliary weapons. It comes with these special LAS cannons designed to shoot around corners. <laughs> I glued the central block together and then heated the barrels with my hairdryer, and carefully held them in a nice straight position, and then plunged them into some cold water to set them quickly. Fiddly thin parts like this can go real floppy real fast when heated, so lots of care is needed to make sure you don't ruin the resin. Not only that, I found that the mount itself was too wide to hold the weapons, so they needed to be heated and pinched together too. As I've said before, I don't really want loads of elements being all loose and floppy, waggling around whenever this thing is moved, so I decided to glue them all in place rather than leaving them free. This angle might seem a bit low at the moment, but trust me, this thing is really tall and it'll make sense when the Titan's assembled. The big bolt cannon things also got glued on at the back too. Now, being honest, these cheeky little armor mounts look like they fell off the back of an Eldar Phantom Titan, but no, they're apparently Imperial, and they attach on the sides like this. By this point, Steve had gone, I was on my own, and I felt the fear kick in. It's crazy how much of a difference having someone there to bounce ideas off and even just to goad you on makes to your confidence building big projects like this. Rather than tackle the arms and potentially ruin everything, I decided to build the easy missile launchers. The vents got glued on the back. There's a bit of movement on the actual mount itself, so to make sure the solid blocks of resin that disguise themselves as missile launchers have something to lean their weight on, I drilled out the centers and stuck in 3mm carbon rod. And yes, I did drill into the edge of my table. It's my table, I can do what I want. I'm a dad now, officially a grown up apparently. You can tell if you've got good alignment by holding up your assembly to a light. If you can see through and the light is nice and round, the pin should go in no problem. If it's not quite clear or the shape isn't quite right, you need to bore it out a little bit more. And there we go. Rod in, nice and snug. I use the lip of my table to make sure the angle is the same on both launches and attach the elevation pistons. Easier said than done. Gluing the tips and then gluing the rods and then trying to attach it all without getting glue on your fingers is totally impossible. I've left in some of the uh, stickiest mistakes I made just in case you thought that because I'm technically a professional I'm actually any good at this. I used to have no fingerprints because I played bass every day and now it's just because I can't stop super gluing my fingers to stuff. Despite all that chat about not having moving parts, I reckon it'll actually be handy to be able to remove the missile launchers, maybe swap them out for the Gatling laser things further down the line, so I drilled out a recess using a force a bit and used gel super glue to attach some magnets. And yeah, looking back at this footage, that does look quite dangerous. Please ignore the fact that I'm using sharp power tools without a clamp. I marked out the polarities of the magnets with a sharpie just to make sure they're all compatible and I don't end up having levitating missile launches. 
All the magnets glued in place, and after 10 minutes or so of letting the glue set, let's have a look. Nice. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> On to day three of the build now, and guess who's back? Back again. It's Steve, and he means business. And now we can confront the arm problem. I'm not really bothered about swapping out the weapons, as these specific weapons were chosen by the Midwinter Mini's Patreon supporters. It's as much their Titan as it is mine. Uh, not in a legally binding way, you understand, but definitely in a spiritual way. But it might be handy to be able to remove the weapons for storage or transport. The problem is, the best place to magnetize the arms is right under the shoulder, but there are pistons that lock on to the upper arm section from the torso, and that will be really complicated to magnetize. And the arms are really heavy too, so this section kind of has to be glued. The arms are poseable, but none of the joints will nicely house magnets, so I think we might just have to glue the whole thing together so it's super solid and just take extra care when transporting. Steve also had this totally amazing tip for posing limbs. Hold them together in the pose that you want them, and then take some photos using your phone. And that way you can see how the parts fit together, and then when you glue them, you can be pretty confident that they're going to look how you want them to when you finally attach them. Even though these parts aren't going to move, I still drilled out and pinned each section using carbon rods so everything has a bit more structural security. Also, the rods weigh less than the resin, so it kind of counts as strategic weight relief too. For all the hefty joints, I used two-part epoxy to fix them in place, clamping to make sure it sets nice and snug before adding the support rod. I then re-drilled the hole just to make sure the rods fitted snugly and plunged them in, adding a bit of super glue to make sure they don't go anywhere. The wrist sections are quite small and are going to be a key stress point on the model, so I want to make sure these are very solid. I gel super glued them in place, just for position really, and then I drilled out a pilot hole and drove in some drywall screws right up into the resin of the upper arm. This wrist isn't going anywhere. On top of adding a central pin for the arm weapon mounts, Steve also recommended adding an off-center pin to make sure that any rotational force wouldn't fracture the glue and spin around that central pin. Did I mention that Steve is a structural engineer? I mean, who'd have guessed? <laughs> Now, as you'll maybe remember, in my young, naive days, I added a magnet to the wrist of a power claw just in case I wanted it to be poseable. Well, now I know I don't want it to be, so let's just glue it on. Both Steve and I tried getting the magnets out, but in the end, Steve ended up just pinning a few points around the magnet and gluing the hand onto the wrist. Looking at the shoulders, those connections don't have any slots or grooves to actually take the weight of the arm at all. It's just a flat horizontal plane, so we use sharpie lines to make sure the angle of the arm is right for the pose that we wanted. And then I marked off a few points that I wanted to shoot some pins through the shoulder into the top of the arm to make sure it's held tight, supporting the weight, and won't fall off even if the glue fails. I aimed my drill upwards to make sure the pins don't just sit at the top of the arm joint, matched up the holes in the arms, and drilled deep enough for the rods to slot in. Two-part epoxy mixed, schlopped into the joint, and Steve held the arms in place while I drove in the rods. Finally, those annoying little pistons that attached to the arm and torso were glued into place. And there we have it, my friends. The sub-assemblies of the body, weapons, head, and armor panels of the Warlord Titan are complete. The resin is clean and ready for paint. There's definitely a few corners to round before the finish line is in sight for this project, but I feel like this is a big milestone. The next thing to really think about, I suppose, is color scheme. When I've asked before, a lot of people really like the idea of integrating the Midwinter Mini's palette of black, white, and ice blue, so maybe I'll do a few tests and see what combo works best. I'm still open to ideas though. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think would work best. Blue armor panels with black trim? White panels with blue trim and black structure? Let me know. One thing I would really love to do is somehow have all the names of the Midwinter Mini's Patreon supporters on this god machine, either in gothic script on the armor panels or maybe on purity seals and banners all over it. And speaking of Patreon supporters, here's this week's newest members. Now, don't click off just yet. I've got a juicy Games Workshop prediction that I want to share with you. Special thanks to Ryan Kennedy, Ruthie, Sharko 9 Storm, Chris Jones, Loz, Ian Fleming, Peter Abbott, Ozzy Beach Babe, The Awkward Customer, Samuel Hills, Omega Shark, Nathan, Victor A. Torre, Fael Farin, Corbin Peck, Harrison Garland, The Rainbow Nessie, Crow Low, Mitch Cameron, Check Out Fleas on Spotify, Tankers and Veerman, Gabriel Smith, 
George and Kieran Imray. Right, I've been thinking about this for a while and I want to share this prediction with you. It seems pretty obvious that Forge World is on the way out. They're hardly putting out any new resin kits these days, and a few things that used to only be available through Forge World, like Krieg Infantry and Heresy Era Space Marines, have now been re-released in plastic. And the Horus Heresy series, which used to be the sole domain of Forge World resin rather than Games Workshop plastic, has a new game and model range released in plastic. Now, given that Warlord Titans are much more common in the setting of Horus Heresy than in Warhammer 40k, and that Games Workshop have included lots of pictures of Warlords in their promo material for the new 30k release, I reckon that plastic, 40k scale Titans are on the way, as well as loads of other Heresy era vehicles like old school rescaled Land Raiders. Anyway, timestamp that, let's see if it comes true in the future. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you had fun. And don't forget to grab your free Audible trial on me if you fancy listening to something new while you get your building or painting done, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.